Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna make Alexa push the button. Sure thing, Bob. I love home automation and I use the Amazon Alexa system a lot to control smart devices all over my house. And a lot of them are plugged into these really simple smart outlets. Basically, once you have something plugged into this, you can say, Alexa, turn on blank, and this will do that. In fact, I use that in two different ways on my Glowforge, which is my laser cutter. I've got my exhaust system set up and the Glowforge so I can say, Alexa, turn on the exhaust. Okay. And Alexa, turn on the Glowforge. Okay. So once the Glowforge is turned on, then it shows up here in the browser and we can do design work and all that stuff. One of the only things that you actually physically have to do on the Glowforge is press a single button on the machine itself. That's how you actually get it to cut. And while I think that is a good idea and it's a safety measure that you should probably use, I wanna find a way around it. And actually I thought this project would be a great way to try out this board I've been interested in, but we'll talk more about that later. First, we need to go mold my finger. I decided to use silicone to make this mold, but you could make it out of several different things. This was a two-part mixture, and so I figured out the total volume I would need, and then cut down a plastic cup that I could fit my finger in. Gloves. Use gloves. Different silicones are measured by volume or by weight, so make sure you read the instructions for the one that you get. I was doing it by volume, so it was really easy to figure out in a measured cup. I poured both parts into the larger cup and mixed really, really well. I used silicone here because I could find it locally at a hobby store, but this is a one-use mold, so you could also use alginate, and it might be a little bit cheaper, but it would work great. I'm gonna use my right hand. I'm gonna start by filling a little bit in the bottom and then stick my finger down into it, I guess. I don't know of a better way to do this. If you wanted a really good mold, you would probably wanna degas this to get rid of the bubbles. This is really not that big of a deal, so I'm just kinda just kind of going with it. Kind of hold it like that. Looks like yogurt. <laughs> All right, why am I doing this? Let's talk about that a little bit. So the whole idea of this is that the Glowforge has one button that you have to press. And so I would like to automate a little system, a finger that will press that when I call out to Alexa. So while this sets up, let me tell you a little bit about the tech behind this. We're gonna start with an ESP8266 board. Now this is a really inexpensive Arduino compatible board that has Wi-Fi built onto it. You can buy these from a bunch of different people. They're all based on the same module. And the big thing about them is that they are lower cost and really easy to use. So we're gonna use this and a piece of code called FOMO. This is an open source piece of software made to emulate one of these smart devices actually made by Belkin. But basically you write some code, you stick it on here, and then this thing broadcasts out a name that Alexa can find as a smart device on your Wi-Fi network. That makes it really easy to use this to execute any tasks that you want and activate that task by calling out to Alexa. So in this case, we're just gonna turn a servo. This is a really basic high torque servo that I've used a bunch of other times in other projects, and this plugs directly onto that board. We don't need anything else except power running to the board through USB. So there's really nothing to the electronics, and the code is a little bit more than I could explain in this video, but essentially it's a free piece of software that you install, you write a little bit of code, you put in your Wi-Fi network settings, and you're good to go. How long are you in? I think I have to wait for 30 minutes. This thing is still setting up, so let's talk about the code a little bit. Basically, all of this code I found on a really great website that had an article explaining this entire process. I'm gonna link it down below because it will have all of the specific information that you need. Essentially, in the code, the only things that you have to customize are your Wi-Fi credentials so that your module can get on the network, and then you give each one of the objects a name. So if I want this finger to be called finger, I just put it in the code. There's also a function that's called a callback, which is the thing that happens after it hears back from Alexa. So when you call out to Alexa, do a thing, the module hears back from her and then executes some action in the callback. The code is not very complicated if you have any programming experience at all, so be sure to check it out. It'll be on my GitHub, and again, I'll link to the original article that I got this code from down in the description. I have my finger stuck in a bowl of uh, strawberry yogurt. Let's go play ping pong. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Alexa, turn on the ping pong table. Okay. This video is sponsored by Blue Apron, which is a great service for getting farm fresh food delivered right to your door. 
You get a recipe, you get all the ingredients you need measured out to the right amounts so there's no trip to the store and there's no waste. It comes in a big refrigerated box and so everything is nice and cool and fresh when you get it and then you can make some really fantastic meals. We actually just finished making this chicken meal for lunch and it was great. It did take us about 55 minutes or so to make this like it says, but this says it feeds four people, we fed nine. It was an excellent meal and all the ones that we've had from there are really good. It's a great service for a bunch of reasons. If you're on the go and you don't have time to go grocery shopping, this is a good way to do it. If you're an aspiring chef and you wanna learn about some new ingredients and new ways to cook food, this is a good way to do it. Or if you just wanna build up some recipes to have in your rotation as you feed your family every week. Each week they offer up eight new recipes and you could pick the ones that you want based on your tastes. You can get a two person plan or a family plan and you can cut it off at any time, there's no commitment. They ship to almost all of the country and it breaks down to about $8.99 a serving. And that's way cheaper than taking your family out to eat. It's definitely good stuff. If you wanna check it out, hit the link down in the description and the first 50 people will get $50 off their first two weeks of Blue Apron. Go check them out, thanks Blue Apron. Definitely been more than 30 minutes, but I think it's set up, so I'm just gonna try. Not bad. After I had the mold ready, I needed to cast the finger, but I needed a way to attach it to the servo. So first, I traced the outline of my finger on a thin piece of aluminum and then cut that out on the scroll saw. This was gonna act as a spine to go down the middle of the casting so that I could mount it onto the servo arm. And to make sure that this would stay inside the casting, I drilled a few holes so the epoxy would go through and keep it captive. All right, to make the finger, I'm gonna use this two-part epoxy just because it's what I have on hand. It's not the cheapest option, but it's what I got. Every brand of epoxy has different instructions about mixing. You need to follow these exactly, otherwise it may not fully harden. I did one pump of the resin and the hardener into a small cup and then mixed it up really well. I poured a little bit into the mold and then tried to make sure to swish it down around into the bottom of the mold so that there was no air bubble stuck at the tip of the finger. Then I filled the rest of the mold and stuck in the spine and used some tape to hold it in place. It hardens in 20 minutes, solid in several hours. So while I had to wait on that, I decided to go ahead and mount the electronics on a small piece of wood. Now this isn't fancy, it doesn't need to be, this is kind of a utility, so I used some scrap wood that I had laying around. I just laid the servo on the wood and marked the outside dimensions of it and then cut out these pieces on the scroll saw. And of course you could use wood glue to put this stuff together, but CA bonds a lot quicker, especially with some activator. I did end up having to swap out the servo later on with something more powerful, but the construction was the same, it was just a bigger gap. After I got all this glued together, I just sprayed it black. And after that, it was time to go check on the finger. If you wanna use molds again and again, you need to cut them in the right way so that you can put them back together in a container and it won't leak out the resin. I cut this in the shape of an S so that it would fit right back together in the cup if I needed to pour another finger. Luckily, this one worked out fine. All right, that is a little disturbing, uh, but also really cool. Like it did a really good job. It's at the perfect 90 degree angle to be able to push the button. So it worked out pretty well. It's just kind of unsettling to look at. <laughs> I trimmed off the back edge with a knife and then it was time to mount it to the servo. I put the servo in place and slid on the arm that came with it. I had to figure out exactly where to mount it on the arm so it could turn a full 90 degrees and the fingertip would touch the right spot. I centered the arm on the aluminum spine and used an ice pick to make a couple of small marks. From here I drilled really small holes through the aluminum so that I could drive some screws through it and the arm to attach them. I made sure that the holes in the aluminum were smaller than the screws were going to be so that they would thread through the aluminum making it really tight. I used a dot of CA glue to hold the servo in place and then snapped on my new finger. <laughs> I mean, that's pr I've made some ridiculous stuff, but that's pretty ridiculous, don't you think? <laughs> I rolled up the servo wire and used a zip tie just to hold it in place. All right, I'm gonna hot glue this down, and while the hot glue gun is heating up, let me tell you the next step in this. Once you've got this thing programmed and it has a name, 
Then you just say Alexa discover devices. She'll find it on your local network and ask you to add it to your smart home stuff. Then you can actually just turn it on and off by name, but there's a way to make it even cooler. The Alexa app uses something called routines where you can set up a few different variables. So in the app, you can actually start a new routine and it says when this happens, and then you get to type in what you want to say. Then you add an action, and that'll be turning this object on and off by name, and then you can have her say anything you want back to you. So instead of having to worry about what that's actually named, you can set up this and say something like, Alexa, push the button, and then she will execute the action and then say, sure thing, Bob, or whatever you want. I often mount electronics with hot glue. It's a good insulator and it's really easy to remove if you need to. Alexa, push the button. Okay, Bob, you're awesome. When this turns to push down, it's gonna actually push this off of the surface. So we're gonna use a command strip to hold it down. And the cool thing about that is you can actually use these command strips to stick it to anything. You could have it on a wall to turn on a light switch, which would be totally ridiculous. All right, so the finger is all set up, ready to go, I think, so we're gonna try it out. Alexa, turn on the Glowforge. Okay. Alexa, turn on the exhaust. Okay. All right, now we're gonna try it out. Alexa, push the button. Okay, I'll push it. I'll push it real good. Obviously this is a really silly example of how you would use something like this, although it does serve a purpose for me. The point of this though is that you have an inexpensive chip with Wi-Fi on it that you can program to do anything that you want. Then you plug up some hardware like motors and sensors, then you can control whatever you've created with Alexa. You can send custom requests to her and get custom responses from her. It's a really cool mixture of a few different technologies and you can do a whole lot with it. I'd love to know what you think about this one. Let me know down in the comments. I've got some other electronics projects as well as woodworking and metalworking and a bunch of other stuff. Check out some of those videos and don't forget to subscribe. That's it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. I've got lots of other chop, but Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff. Today we're gonna- received an important update and- Alexa, turn on the ping pong table. Ping pong table isn't responding. Hmm. You could actually stick this to pretty much anything. I lost my finger.